Hello, welcome everyone to UC Berkeley. I'm here at Wheel Hall, where the Adesnik Lab is located. My name is Ian Oldenburg. I'm a postdoc in the lab and also one of the founders of the Sculpt Plate and the Brain Conference. So come on in and I'll show you around. Let's go. Come on in. Welcome to the lab. So we have three holographic rigs, and I'll start by showing you the one that we call the Frankenscope. Come on in. So this is the first rig that we're going to show you today. This rig, we affectionately call the Frankenscope. It combines a multi-photon imaging system with a multi-photon optogenetic stimulation system. This allows us to point to any cell that's expressing an oxygen and cause that cell to fire in any pattern that we want. All of the microscopes in the Adesnik lab are based on the 3D shock technology. So as we're interested in getting these cells to fire at incredibly precise temporal patterns, we need to get all of the light to each of those cells at exactly the same moment to get the best possible temporal resolution. And for that, we've come up with a number of optical strategies that help us do that. So in a second, we'll walk you through how each part of the microscope works. So here's the back of the microscope. We have a high power 1040 nanometer laser that provides light that will stimulate each of these cells. Then we have a bunch of optical elements to shape the beam. We have a diffraction grating, a spinning diffuser, and a bunch of, of lenses that will shape the beam exactly how we like. Then we come over here and we reach the feeding heart of the microscope, a spatial light modulator, which turns that light into a bunch of different points, which would each target independent cells. This bounces through the, the path again and merges with our imaging path inside the head of the microscope. So now we have a mouse under the rig and we're stimulating individual neurons one at a time. We have maybe 300 neurons that have been identified as opsin positive. You can see them all through here. And if you come over here, you look at each of those neurons being stimulated one at a time. And you can see that while not every neuron is responsive, the vast majority of them are activated exactly when we want them to be. So this sets up the framework by which we can start asking questions about how patterns of activity give rise to all of the phenomena that the brain does. We in the Adesnik lab are especially interested in how it affects vision and perception, but this can be used for a wide array of questions. Let's go to the next holography rig in the lab, the Millennium Phoenix. And we are the uh, Millennium Phoenix team, team in the setup. We are here to show you our setup. Uh, so our goal and our project uh, is to integrate the photocolography with calcium imaging and all kinds of electrophysiological context. So we have uh, right now, as you can see, a slice chamber where we have the tissue in and some patching is going on. But we, on daily basis, our basis now are switching in between in vitro and in vivo approach and single and double patch slices. And now we'd like you to show some of the experiments we are presently doing. So Masato will be touching a cell and then we'll give you a run through. So we are back, Masato just touched a cell and now we are shooting the two photon uh, around our cell phone interest to map the connections to our cell. So we do it in a kind of precise manner, with several layers above and below, basically just add places in a precise way. And here you can look on the oscilloscope how the EVO responses looks like. They are currents, postsynaptic currents coming to our cell right now as we speak.
So here we, what we have here is a uh, five trials of um, running two photon stimulation of the space around the opsin, uh, not, not opsin negative cell that we have patched. And so on this window we have here is the entire trace across time. And we see here a series of postsynaptic events. At this kind of uh, view, we don't know if any of these postsynaptic events are related to two photon stimulation, but if we are to take these events and corresponded to where it was stimulated, when it was stimulated in space, we can create these, generate these color maps here. These color maps will represent the space around the patch cell, and all of these responses are essentially the peak of the postsynaptic event that occurred when that space, corresponding space, was being stimulated. And so what we can see here is that if we refer to this area as one part of the um, area, one part of the space and one, uh, one, one layer of the grid, then we can see that potentially there may be a source of connections that are uh, inputting to our patch cell. Let's go back outdoors for a quick recap into why we do what we do. Hi there, my name is Mora Ogando. Hi, my name is Lamia Viraji. We are postdocs at the Adesnik Lab. And the main question that we're trying to answer here is what aspects of neural activity are important for perception? We've known for years that the activity of certain uh, neurons in the brain correlates very uh, strongly with uh, certain sensory stimulus, such that we can predict very accurately which stimulus is out there in the world just by looking at the activity of specific groups of neurons. But uh, only now we're beginning to address the question, is that activity really important, necessary for the perception of, of that particular stimulus? And we can go even further and ask, what aspects of the neural activity are critical for perception? Is it uh, the identity of the specific neurons? Is it the synchrony uh, that, they, that they share? Uh, is it the general network state? These questions that, that we're trying to ask uh, require a very precise control of the neural activity. So to address these questions that Maura just mentioned, we would need a technology that allows us to both read and write specific patterns of activity uh, onto specific groups of uh, neurons. So for, for instance, we would be able to select and activate a specific group of neurons that would have a very similar feature and then analyze the effects over the uh, rest of the circuit. So come over with us, we'll show you our systems. This is the third and most versatile of all the Adesnik Lab holography rigs, the Satsuma rig. Oh my god, what is this? How many paths do you have here? We have met any optics on the system. This is just because we have uh, multiple independent optical paths over here. So we can think of this system as basically a Swiss knife uh, microscope for neuroscientists. So we have first our signature technology, which is a 3D holography that we call 3D shot. The main point here is this special light modulator um, with high refresh rate together with the grading over there and basically just a bunch of relay optics that allows us to generate uh, user-defined uh, 3D patterns of activity at the focus of the objective. And this is basically to manipulate their activity. Right. Another option for recording is uh, doing 3D, uh, fast 3D uh, multiplane imaging. And we do this with this other special light modulator which is also high refresh rate, and it basically allows us to switch very fast between planes and to still have arrays compatible with neural activity. Another option we have for volumetric imaging is actually vessel beam imaging. And so what vessel gives you is typically a projection of your 3D volume onto a 2D plane. So you end up having the full volume, but at the speed really equivalent to a 2D plane. So to generate the vessel, we typically use a special light modulator as well. So this is our third SLM on the way, but this one doesn't have to be 
a high refresh rate because it's basically a static phase mask that we put onto the bath. Um, and so this uh, technique gives you the advantage of the speed uh, and it's specifically suited for very sparsely labeled samples um, and so for instance if you want to study uh, inhibitor in your neurons. Uh, and then we also have other more exploratory experimental paths um, like this path for example where we're playing a bit or doing some phase shaping for uh, other types of volumetric systems. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The last perk maybe of this system is that we had made this custom scan system where we both have a galvo-galvo system upstairs and then downstairs we have a resonant galvo. So this allows you to use either or, uh, or you can use them simultaneously and be able to do multi-region resonant scanning. So this Swiss knife microscope, as I said, is used in many uh, projects from spines to circuits to behavior. And Warren's gonna show you an example of the system in action. So in this video, I'm showing you an example of two of the tools that Lamy just described, which are fast multiplying two photon calcium machine that allows us to record thousands of neurons simultaneously and our multi-target stimulation system 3D shot. So on the right, you can see the four planes that I'm recording at 8 Hz, and on the left, I'm tracking the online activity of 200 uh, of those cells that I chose based on functional properties of my interest. You can see how I can activate these cells in groups of 50 cells at the same time. Finally, in order to know how the mouse is perceiving our perturbations, we train them to move this Lego wheel in a different direction depending on the visual stimulus that we present on a screen in order for them to get a reward. This allows us to have a readout of perception while we create custom neural activity patterns inside their brains. Combining all these tools, we can now replace the physical sensory stimulus with different patterns of neural activity to see which of them evoke the appropriate motor output. This means that we want to produce a controlled and precise hallucination. We then can diverge from that pattern in different ways, exploring different dimensions of the neural activity to try to hack the neural code. 